welcome back. Here's today's lesson on 5.2 about evaluating polynomials and it says graphing polynomials but we're not going to do a whole bunch of graphing. We're going to do something that concerns the graphs but not actually graphing. We're going to, we're going to wait until we get some more uh, experience with polynomials before we start graphing them. So objective one, we're going to be able to evaluate polynomials using some direct substitution. Very, very easy. Just plug a number in. And then something called synthetic substitution. Hmm, that sounds vaguely familiar. And then our second objective is to describe the in behavior of the graphs of polynomials. That's where the graph part of the title comes in. Just what are the ends of our graphs looking like? Hmm, good question. So uh, let's look at a couple of warm-up activities first, so warm-up exercises. How does the sine of a and f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, so just a quadratic function, how does that affect the graph? Well, remember, a does a couple of things. First of all, it makes it fatter or skinnier, and um, it also flips it upside down, turns it into a, a beard or a mustache. So. Take a look at that first one. That first one is a beard. Let me pull out my pen. Put some eyes here in a minute. Oh yeah, look, right there, it's a beard. What do you know about the sign of A then? Well, that one's gotta be, oops, that one's gotta be positive, okay. But if it's negative, then we look like this and we have ourselves a mustache, eyes, it looks like a sad face. Let me brighten it up. Oh, there's a mustache right there. Oh, there we go. So if it's negative. And uh, specifically what we're talking about here for, for today's lesson is like these ends here. Where are the arrows pointing? Those ones are both pointing up. These are both pointing down. So we're going to take a look at all the different kinds of polynomial functions and uh, where those things, things are pointing Second one, use synthetic division to divide. We've got a polynomial uh, expression. We're going to divide it by x plus 2. Okay, so synthetic division, if you remember, this x has is is lying to you, so I don't really take the uh, 2 there. I make this thing negative 2. Okay, so I put that outside the box, negative 2 and then draw myself the synthetic division box and I check to see am I missing any terms x cubed, x squared, x, nope and then I just write down our coefficients a 3, a 5, a negative 7, a negative 4 what do I do first? I take that 3 and I bring it straight down 3. Now I take the 3 and I multiply it times the negative 2 there and get negative 6. Add these two together I get negative 1. Multiply again. Negative 2 times negative 1 is just 2. Add these two together and I get uh, negative 5, right? right. Okay, multiply again. I get positive 10. Finally add them and I get a 6. And uh, what I always like to do is I box that last number at the end because that last number is the remainder. So, how you write your answer, your quotient, it is 3x to the, well this one was to the third power, and we're dividing it by x to the first power, so subtract those two exponents, it's got to be a squared. We went down in degree by 1. Minus 1x minus 5, and then that last piece is the remainder, plus 6, divided by whatever it was we divided by, think was x plus 2. There we go. There's the answer. So um, let me ask you a question. What if, what if the remainder was 0? What if remainder equals 0? Well that was a, uh, there was a couple of things that were true then. If the remainder was 0 that meant that the x plus 2 or whatever it was we were dividing by it went evenly into the uh, dividend, whatever it was we were dividing into. It also meant the x plus 2 would have been a factor. Is x plus 2 a factor of 
3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x minus 4? No, because the remainder is 6. Hmm, okay. So, a whole bunch of vocabulary here. Some of these are some review vocabulary words. Like, we've seen this word polynomial before. We looked at polynomial expressions when we were factoring. Now we're going to look at them as functions. And then polynomials, they just have x's in them and coefficients. And all of those variables can only have whole number powers. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Coefficient, that's the number in front of the variable, like a 3x. We're talking about that thing. Leading coefficient, if I have 3x minus 4, it's the number that's out front. Um, constant term, for this one, the constant term would be the 4. It doesn't have a variable. No variable. It's constant. It doesn't change. Degree is the highest power. Highest power. Also, how hot that polynomial is. Uh, linear. Linear means that you have the first degree. Quadratic means you have the second degree. Cubic, the third degree. Quartic, fourth degree. Do you remember what five is? Hmm. And then synthetic division is what we just did on that last warm-up exercise. So, objective one. Here we're going to be able to evaluate polynomials in two different ways, direct substitution and synthetic substitution. Take a look at the uh, picture there with that cute little bunny. He's about to plug in a fork or stick a fork in that outlet. That's direct substitution. You stick something in and something comes out. Input and output. The output in this case would be maybe a toasted bunny. Hmm. Um, and synthetic substitution is going to give us an alternative to that direct substitution. All right, so some review of polynomial. Polynomial's expression looks like this. Look at all of the powers of x. x to the n plus blah, 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 plus x squared plus something x plus some sort of constant. So the degree of the polynomial is n as long as the a sub n is not 0, which means it's just the highest power. That's what's in red right over here. The degree is the highest power. All the exponents are non-negative integers. That's a fancy way of saying they have to be whole numbers. Okay. All of the coefficients, all of the coefficients for us are going to be real numbers. And the leading coefficient is the one that's out front. It's the one that's on the, the term with the highest power. And the constant is the one that doesn't have a variable with it. So in this little generic expression, it's the a sub 0. Okay? And then one last thing. Standard form, technically speaking, we like to put them in order from highest power to lowest power. Okay? Powers in descending order. All right? So here's a picture of a whole bunch of different kinds of polynomials. We've got the constant, the linear, the quadratic, you got x squared, cubic, x cubed, and so on. So these are the generic forms. Here's some actual examples with some numbers thrown in here. So let's look at the quadratic. Tell me, in the quadratic, what is the constant term? The constant term is 6. That's constant. And the leading coefficient is the negative 1.5. So that's leading coefficient. All right, let's skip down to, say, the quintic. There's what the fifth degree is. Highest power is 5. The leading coefficient here is a 4. Okay, so leading coefficient. And the constant term is a 42 constant. All right, that stuff's pretty easy, right? Just vocabulary stuff. Okay. So, evaluating a function at a particular value just means that you're finding the output for your given input. I give you something, you, t you stick it in for x, and you tell me what's supposed to come out. That's just general uh, direct substitution. It's usually pretty tedious, especially when your powers are pretty high. So you take your x, you put it in for every single x, do some math, and then whatever your output is, that's your answer. 
So let's give this a try here. So on number one, I'm going to take that negative two, stick it in for x everywhere there is an x. So f of negative two, that's the way I write that, equals negative two, this goes in parentheses, cubed, minus five times negative two squared, plus six times negative two, and then plus one. Now let's simplify here. Negative two cubed, got eight, but since it's an odd power, it stays negative, so negative eight. All right, negative two squared is just positive four, times negative five is minus 20, and then six times negative two is negative 12 plus one. Okay, so uh, I can do something a little crazy here. Why don't I add these two up together? That gives me a negative 20, plus the other negative 20 is negative 40, plus one is negative 39. Okay, look at that number two. Guess who gets to do that? You. Pause it, please, and then uh, check back with me in a second. All right, check this out. Did you get nine? Good. All right, just sticking direct substitution, taking that four, putting it in for every x, working it out, doing a little bit of math. Okay. So uh, I know this is going to seem weird. It's going to seem weird, but just follow me for a second here. We're going to use synthetic division to divide uh, that polynomial that I, that I just gave you. It's the same one as before. See, same exact polynomial. And now we're going to divide it synthetically by x plus 2. Okay. Um, I know it seems like a very strange request, but let's just do it. So let's remember this lies to you, so really I need to make that a negative 2. So put a negative 2 here. Verp. Am I missing any terms? 3, 2, 1, no. Okay, so put a 1, negative 5, a 6, and a 1. Bring down my 1, multiply, negative 2, add it, negative 7, multiply, 14, add it, 20, multiply, negative 40, add it, negative 39. Have I seen that number before? Whatever. Um, okay, so let's try it over here on, on number two for some reason. Okay, so remember this lies to you. Gotta use a four, a positive four on the outside. Get the same numbers across the top here. One, negative five, six, and a one. Bring down the one, multiply, four, add, negative one, multiply, negative four, add two, multiply, eight, nine. That also looks familiar. Where have I seen those numbers before? Oh, those are the exact same numbers. And that was way easier to do. So what you can see from this, or what you can gather from this, is that whatever the remainder is, the remainder is the exact same thing we would have gotten if we would have put that number or evaluated the function at that particular x value. So for, for example, look back at number one on the previous exercise. We directly substituted negative two. And if I do set synthetic division with negative two, I get negative 39 is the answer. Hmm. Okay, so back over here at number two, if I were to evaluate the function at four, I get nine. If I do synthetic division with four, my remainder is also nine. That's pretty handy. That is called the remainder theorem. If a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is f of k. So let me go back just for a second. If this polynomial, this is my f of x, is divided by x plus 2, remember I'd have to change the sign, whatever the remainder is, is the same thing as if I were to just substitute this in directly f of negative 2 should be equal to negative 39. It's the remainder, which is why this is called the remainder theorem. Okay, 
So uh, instead of calling it synthetic division now, we're going to call it synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution. I am synthetically substituting my number in, and I'm going to use the remainder to come up with what the answer is. So we can use synthetic division, well, called synthetic substitution in this case, to quickly evaluate a function at a particular x value. And uh, yeah, this in red here, important to remember, this time you don't change the sign. Take a look. Let's look at it on an actual example when we're putting all the pieces together and we understand what's going on here. Okay. So over here on the left-hand side, use synthetic substitution to evaluate the polynomial function at the given value of x. So on number one, in other words, what we're trying to find is f of 2. See, x value is 2. I do not change the sign here. I just put 2 on the outside of the parentheses and look to see if I'm missing anything. So 3, 2, 1, no. So just write down my coefficients. 5, 3, negative 1, 7. Looks like I made a black box too big. Bring down my 5, multiply. 10, add. 13, multiply. 26, and then a 25, multiply. 50, and I get a 57. Therefore, I can conclude that f of 2 is equal to 57. And that was way easier to do than just putting those numbers in and then evaluating all those powers. Imagine how messy it's going to get when the power is like a 4 or a 5. Well, here, you try it. You try it on number 2. Pause the video and then come back and see me. And how about this? You should have gotten g of negative 1 equals negative 10. If you didn't get that, chances are you didn't realize or didn't recognize that you were missing the x squared term. So you had to put a 0 placeholder in that. Tricky. But once you did, um, you don't change the sign, remember. Take that negative 1, do synthetic substitution with it. Your remainder turns out to be negative 10. So that's your answer. Excellent. Okay. So, um, one last question here on this first objective, and that is, what's it mean if the remainder is zero when you perform synthetic substitution? Okay, so let's say that we went about um, sticking in, say, k, so f of k, and we did synthetic substitution, so k was on the outside, and there were some numbers here, blah, 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 and then whenever we did our remainder, our remainder was zero. Well, that means that f of k is equal to 0. What does that mean? Well, it is a number for x that makes the function equal to 0. It is a 0 of the function. It also means that it is, well, where do zeros appear? When your y value is 0, those things are x enter seps. Ta -da. And that's going to be pretty handy information for the coming lessons because what we're going to try to do is we have a polynomial function and we're trying to see where its zeros are. Where does it touch the x-axis? And really we need that information before we can start graphing the things. So this, all, uh, this objective was all about trying to evaluate a function at a particular x value. So we had either direct substitution where you just take your x value, stick it into the equation, do the math. What's it equal? Um, and then synthetic division looks like synthetic, subs, uh, synthetic substitution looks like synthetic division, but you don't change the sign. And whatever the remainder is, that's what your answer would have been if you directly substituted it in. Not so bad. Pretty easy. So come back and see me for objective two.